Welcome to Traders Galaxy, and today we're going to look at some stuff about Bot War 3. Hi everyone, welcome back to Traders Galaxy channel and um, I thought um, on the eve of uh, the Bot War 3 pre-order launch I would try and uh, bash out a couple of videos uh, about the forces in the box and talk a little bit about the Bot War 3 rules if I can. This is all unscripted so I apologise, it's very low key. My, As I said in my last video, my microphone has also like died. So I'm just using the phone microphone at the moment, so my apologies. Um, so I thought today I would try and look at some Golden Lions and um, then expand out into the wider faction of Golden Lions a little bit, um, just to show you guys a few of the models, etc. And um, show you what's in the box set. So I'll go through each of the models in the box set first and then I'll go into the wider range of Golden Lions. The Golden Lions Faction Guide is actually coming out very soon. For those that don't know how Bot War has um, moved over the last sort of 12 months, the Valiants, which are sort of like your good guys, uh, good guy robots in Bot War, they had like a giant sort of generic faction with um, lots of um, loads and loads of bots you know, it's, it's easily like the largest faction. Um, but I found like over the 12 months, I've separated each of the factions into five, sorry for this camera shaking by the way, that's the table, into five uh, battle groups. So each of those battle groups are a color. So you have white knights, which are white, obviously. Um, they were always their own faction, the white knights led by Sordana. And then we have the Red Cannoneers, which are Red Battle Group. They focus on sort of like your short-ranged shooting. So they're very good at that. Great beginner's force, by the way, Red Cannoneers. And there is a box set coming out for them very soon. And then there's the Green Spectres. And they are sort of like your uh, sort of uh, scouting, sort of secretive. Um, a lot of like tricks in their gameplay, a bit more complicated to play than the Red Cannoneers, but probably the stronger of the two factions. And then we have the Golden Lions, which are these guys here. These guys are more about resilience and sort of, they're a bit like tanks, I guess, and they like tank tank hits and stuff like that, but they're also like the priestly class, like the Paladins and sort of warrior priests of the Valiance faction, that's Yellow Battle Group. And then we will have, coming out later this year, the blue speedsters, which are like your fast um, valiants that are all about movement and getting across the battlefield really fast. So more on them, I guess, in a future in a future time when they're out. But this time, this is the third battle group um, out for valiants, which is the golden lions, yellow battle group. So this guy here is their leader. His name is Paladon, and he is obviously a big uh, dump truck type dude. <laughs> Now, a lot of people um, ask me, you know, with the white arm and the white hammer, it's because of their religious um, sort of sort of slant in the sense that um, the priests of the uh, Golden Lions, they have a white arm and hammer because they are the right arm of the one, which is the giant code that sort of birthed them all. And so... Whenever they deliver their righteous justice, it's actually justice of the one being delivered. Uh, and that's why their arm is white and their hammer is white. But yeah, Paladon's very strong. Probably not quite as strong as Jugal, but definitely up there. Pretty tough dude, very chunky. Um, and I was saying in the last video that the design choices for the Golden Lions moving forward have all been sort of to return more to a blocky sort of design choice to make a big contrast with the more sort of modern and I guess sleeker look of the cross wall band. That will be a, like quite um, 
these differences of design choice will be like a thing moving forward with bot war so that's paladon yeah very cool nice big shield pretty tough and then we have this is my favorite of the golden lines this is iron arm and iron arm is not um it's not a priest but he has a black arm and it's because like he's sort of like your adversary model you know sort of like your bad guy because that black arm obviously represents death and so with a ranged attack of four that's pretty good that's that's a lot of death so yeah so he's just got some huge shells there coming out of his backpack um very cool model now iron arm in the law is actually the new form of iron skin who was destroyed and so in the law um the bots are actually immortal and their code goes to sort of an ether where it's then downloaded into a new body based on new schematics that the code itself has decided that it wants so they go away for a while and then they come back well they might not come back depends there is predators in the ether that eat code so not all of them will come back but yeah that's the basic idea um this is wrench and eventually down the track there will be a dark wrench version because in the lore this character has sort of a jekyll and hyde type of um deal but he is a priest um of the golden lions nice Big combat shield as well. All of these are painted by uh, Stuart from Klim Fandango, by the way. Good bloke. Does a good job. And this is Dream Machine. Very simple designs on these ones, which I really like. And we have Cavalcade. Again, another priest. There are actually uh, four priests, but I don't have the um, the fourth one painted yet. That's Cavalcade. And then we have actually two Golden Lions, which are Raw and Growl. So these guys here, they are not really symbiotes, although they look like symbiotes. So they sort of operate a little bit like symbiotes though, in the sense that if you're in base-to-base -base contact with one of the other golden lines, there's abilities that are conferred. So it's more of a movement-based um, symbiosis, but there is no host in the golden lines. So um, they're more sort of like sp supporting characters. And uh, there's a few of the symbiotes that behave like that, especially in the Mercs faction. Um, that it's less, it's less uh, beneficial to actually host them. You're better off um, uh, actually putting them into base-to-base -base contact with another model um, in order to sort of get better benefits for that model. So that's, that's quite a theme running through Golden Lines actually. So there's a few models like that. Um, where you can actually, <laughs> if you wanted to, you could actually stack up like three or four of these symbiote type models into base base contacts to create some uber character. <laughs> but you just have to watch out that the, 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 the smaller models don't get blasted away in order to make the char character weaker. So certainly a way to play is if you, if you just join a bunch of characters together, they become sort of some sort of they confer their abilities to like some uber fighter, which um, which is an all egg all eggs in one basket type of approach, but it could work. So moving on to the wider faction, I'll just show the ones that we have painted here at the moment. So this is probably the big one that's coming out with the pre-order. So people who get like the best pre-order deal will actually get this in resin. This is a metal one that is sort of like more of a mock-up. Um, which is Hot Wheel riding a Beast Lord. Now, Beast Riders are gonna actually going to be a thing in Bot War 3, so we'll probably see a lot more models riding other models as cavalry. So, 
uh, in the Golden Lions. The Golden Lions actually have a rapport uh, with the Beast Lords, who are sort of like um, the one's special creations. So Hot Wheel is actually the liaison between the Valiants and the um, and the Beast Lords. So that's why he can ride Stegarus. It's actually pretty powerful combination and quite expensive, nearly 30 points for that model. But yeah, he can he can smash a lot of stuff. He has Armored Might and Ram Attack, which is pretty brutal. Probably would bring down uh, a Titan character quite quickly. So uh, pretty scary Titan killer there. So, and obviously we have normal Hot Wheel. Now this one here is a bit of a conversion based off our old Hot Wheel. We've just removed the headdress. Um, but there is a new Hot Wheel coming out with the pre-order for people who want that deal. So, um, Hot Wheels are very, this is just a 3D printed model um, that Stu whipped up for me for this video basically. So, um, so yeah, Hot Wheels pretty cool. Uh, and we have here, this is Overcharge. So Overcharge has the Surge special rule. Um, quite a cool model. Uh, just a little little guy. Uh, the little guys like this, they don't um, really deliver much in terms of combat or anything, but they're still pretty good shooters, and they're pretty cheap, and they can also give you extra energy. Uh, this is Speed Racer. So Speed Racer is just a standard warrior. Moves quite fast, actually, for a golden line. He's got a movement of nine. But there is um, abilities um, in the... There's upgrades in the golden lines where you can actually swap out some movement for some additional health, I think. I think it's um, swap out two movement for plus one health. So you can actually get some quite tanky uh, golden lines by surrendering some movement. This one here is... Top Shot. Um, again, there is a new Top Shot coming, which is actually a variation pose on this Top Shot. This Top Shot is actually available on our My Mini Factory to download yourself and print yourself at home. So Stu did this one up for me. Uh, I do love this model though. He's got his like targeter on his face there and he is a sharpshooter, so he's not bad at shooting. He can re-roll to hit. So, so yeah, it's Top Shot. I've got here uh, Conrod. Uh, Conrod is a metal model that's available here. Um, this is one of my paint jobs, so not as good as you can see. But um, yeah, a good standard warrior. Has advanced armor, so he's a bit bulky. Um, so he can re-roll against um, attacks. A little bit better than iron skin in the sense that um, it's against all attacks, not just uh, ranged attacks. So yeah, good standard warrior for golden lions. And here we have Switch. Switch is a symbiote actually. Um, and quite cheap. So even though there's no hosting, it's probably going to be good to secure objectives with Switch because it's high movement. And also um, uh, potentially take out um, smaller what are called battery type bots um, on the opponent's force. So yeah, switch, cheap, cheap model. Uh, and we'll go into, this is Olita. I don't know if you can focus that there because she's painted black. So Olita is pretty great at combat. She does only have five damage, but she also has Hayabusa. And Hayabusa, if in base-to-base -base contact with Alita, can confer on Alita Armored Might, which is pretty brutal. So Alita becomes like a total killing machine if Hayabusa is in base-to-base -base contact with her. So overall, Alita's got pretty good stats, except for she's not very resilient, but adding um, Hayabusa can bump her up with Armored Might, so, yeah, pretty good. It's going to be a challenge, though, to keep Hayabusa in close, com in base-to-base -base contact with her. Um, 
for the duration. So that's just something that people will have to try and work around. But if you can get it to work, it is uh, very, um, very beneficial. And that's sort of how bot wall works. Everything that is, um, everything that is like quite strong always has like a little drawback. It's either very difficult to do or there's like a, a chance that it can go wrong. So the golden lines, one of the biggest things with the golden lines is that they can actually summon a beast lord to the battle. The warrior priest can actually use it as sort of like a super ability to summon um, a beast lord, which is a really massive benefit, right? Like to get a whole sort of like 20 point model for free summoned to the battlefield. However, it's not that easy to do. So you get a one in, I think it's a one in three chance of being able to summon it in the first place. If you do summon it, you then have to roll on a chart to see who you summon and you have a two in 10 chance of summoning a model for your opponent. So you could get Darkstone or Spiner Rock which are pretty brutal characters, Darkstone especially. Um, and those characters joining your opponent's force would not be pleasant indeed. So Darkstone is a really powerful... I'll actually show you uh, Darkstone. So Darkstone here is a very powerful character. If you summon this character to your opponent's force, then you might struggle. So, but if you do get a Beast Lord, Great, uh, you've got a great advantage, but there's always like a slight chance that it may not happen. So that's really the golden lines. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think, and um, hopefully um, the pre-orders is tonight. Hopefully you guys all manage to get your set if you're looking to do that. There are um, a few different tiers of the deals for to suit each budget. And um, yeah, Bot War 3 is going to be the best uh, rule set for giant bot combat there is. Take it easy.